Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Everybody, you may be seated. Thank you for joining me in giving God high praise. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I feel you in this place. Lord, thank you for coming in. Thank you for coming in, Jesus. We feel your anointing. We feel your presence. Lord, go ahead and destroy every yoke. Lord, I feel it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Tonight, I want to go ahead and give us our ministry update so we can go straight into praise and worship. Coming up this Friday, everyone say this Friday. Everyone, I want everybody to be there this Friday. We need everyone. It's all hands on deck. This is the point in time where we all get together and we recommit ourselves to prayer and fasting. We're going to have an all-night prayer meeting here at the church. We need everybody. We are going to be praying for miracles, signs, wonders and God is going to provide a revival that we have never seen before you have to believe it the Bible says that miracle signs and wonders will follow them that believe if you believe it you got to be here you got to show up in faith because God is going to do the miraculous there's also a sign-up sheet I don't want to go too far without letting you know there is a sign-up sheet in the foyer that you can sign up for this prayer meeting we want to make sure that we have everybody in the roll call like the old song said oh when the saints come marching in we're going to be coming in for prayer on Sunday we are going to be recommitting ourselves in a dis different aspect we're going to be recommitting ourselves to our missionaries, to the gospel. We are going to be here for our faith promise service. I want to be looking for all the faces that I see here tonight. Their Sunday, we are going to have a guest speaker. How many was blessed this past Sunday from our past guest speaker, Brother Barnhill? That was a wonderful, wonderful service. And if you missed out, go ahead and go back and watch it again. Let the Lord bless you. On February the 2nd. This is the first prayer meeting of February. This is for the ladies. This is our ladies prayer meeting. Can I have all of our ladies say, ladies prayer. Ladies prayer. That was a little weak. Ladies prayer. ladies prayer. It is very important that all of our ladies make it out to ladies prayer. You may ask why. Let me tell you why. The Bible says when a woman begins to pray, she begins to turn her husband and her children towards repentance. It is very important that our women are here, our mothers are here praying for our children and for your families. It is very important. So again, on February 2nd, there will be ladies' prayer. You are the first prayer meeting of February. On February 7th, we have a lot going on and we have a lot to look forward to. We are going to be having Global Missions Sunday. Global Mission Sunday, we're going to kind of continue what we are going to be having in this upcoming Sunday with that faith promise. We are going to, again, highlight our missionaries. Our missionaries are very important because they are bringing gospels into areas of the world that we probably wouldn't go ourselves. And they are taking the risk with their families and sacrificing a tremendous amount. It's too great to talk about just in this one moment. But you'll hear more about it coming up this Sunday and February the 7th. On February 7th, after that service, we are going to be having a fundraiser for the first time ever. I do believe, correct me if I'm wrong, will be the first time we've ever had a chicken Alfredo plate here at the church. This plate is going to be delicious. If you're like me and you love Alfredo, you're going to want to be here. How many of our families here have young people that are in the Anthem Student Ministries? Can I just see your hands? All right, there we go. All right. All right. This event is for you. If you have children and you don't have the funds that you need right now to send them off to North American Youth Congress, that's what this fundraiser is for. We want all of our children to be able to make it off to this North American Youth Congress. Why? Because at North American Youth Congress, it changes the view of our young people and positions them on how they can respond to God in a church setting. And if you've been to a North American Youth Congress, you know just as much as I do that if you've been there, it will keep you a little bit longer in the church. I'm still here because I went to a North American Youth Congress and I got invested and I went out and I fundraised and I was able to go and be blessed. So we want you, young people, to go out, fundraise, and be blessed. Following this 
Chicken Alfredo fundraiser. We are going to be having outreach at 3 o'clock. Can I hear the church say outreach? outreach? Outreach. This is what we were founded upon. This is what the pioneers came and they did. They went out and they outreached. This is how we win souls. We get out there and we start knocking on doors. We start hanging out door hangers. We start talking to the people in our communities about the goodness of Jesus Christ. I don't have much people that believe it, but I think the people that do. I truly believe that when we go out there this upcoming Sunday on February the 7th, when we start hitting the streets with the gospel, that we are going to see a return, a reward from heaven because of the labor that's being put out. If you cannot make it out and your body cannot take the walk in that's about to be taking place on that February, we still want the gospel to go out. We are putting faith in the hands of this gospel. We want you to come. We want you to be here in the sanctuary at 3 o'clock also. We want you to pray that the Lord would send out angels to go with us because I believe that there is a supernatural power that can take place if we begin to pray. We need people that are going to intercede. We need people that are going to touch the throne of God and is going to plead that God would pour out his spirit upon our community and that we are going to see this community baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. I believe it and I will receive it and I want you to be there with me when it goes down on February 10th all of our JFK are you excited because guess what JFK you're coming back to Sunday and you're coming back Wednesday we are going to be having Wednesday night Sunday <laughs> hallelujah we're going to have class again we're going to have class. We are going to have it every single Wednesday and every single Sunday. We are going to be having Sunday school and we're going to be having Wednesday night JFK classes. <laughs> Anthem, guess what? You're not excluded either. On Sunday, February the 14th, you will be joining them and we will be having our Sunday morning classes again. <laughs> All right. February 13th, wrapping it up. All of our married couples, can you raise your hands? Look at you, being blessed. One day I'll get there. <laughs> All right. So on February 13th, uh, we are going to be having our marriage encounter 2021. Wow, nobody. Okay, we are having a marriage encounter 2021 on February 13th. Lord, I ain't even married. I'm excited about it. <laughs> All right. We want you to go ahead and start saving the date now. We want you to be able to look forward to it because there's going to be a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of prayer that's going to be put forth in this effort. And we want you to be blessed, and we want you to invite other couples that you know to come out and be a part of this because we want you to be blessed with them. This is not something that we want to keep to ourselves again. There is going to be a lot of vested in this, and therefore we want to see a lot of reaping and benefits coming from this. All right? All right, everybody go ahead and stand up. We're moving on to the next portion of our service, which is offering. This is a portion that we get to test and see God and take him at his word. Over here, we have our offering plates. They're laid out here, and they'll be here for the whole service. You can step out in faith at any time and try God. We have in the back credit card machines that make it easy to give. We have on our Tidely app, you can text to give. I'm not sure if we have those slides here at the moment. But if you have any questions, feel free to uh, ask any of our uh, staff here at the church. and We'll help you get there. Again, we want you to be blessed in your giving. And we want to continue to thank God for every blessing that he pours out on us. So we're going to move on to prayer. And I want everybody to go ahead and start lifting your hands now. If you have a need, this is your time. I want you to name your need, and I want you to claim it in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we come before you, mighty God, believing in your power. Lord, we are standing here firm on the word, and Lord, we believe, Lord, that you have won the victory. Lord, that death, hell, and the grave cannot stop us. Lord, because you are working within us. Lord, you are changing, Lord, the outcome of our situations. What the enemy had meant for evil, 
oh Lord, you are turning it around right now for good. Lord, I speak life into this house. Lord, I speak life into these circumstances. And I pray that faith would begin to arise in your people right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, that faith, oh Lord, would help them to stand and stand again. Lord, to stand against the enemy, to stand against his tactics. Lord, that we are not ignorant. Lord, that we stand strong. Lord, we are standing upon the word. Lord, that we know that there's a snake at the door. But Lord, you have put him under our feet today. Lord, we are claiming a little bit that no infirmity can touch us and take us out. Lord, that no debt, Lord, is too great to take us out. That no depression is too great to take us out. Jesus, we believe it. Lord, we receive it. Lord, I pray that you would bless us. Lord, bless us as we give in the offering. Lord, bless us as we give every high praise tonight. Jesus, we are recommitting ourselves to you. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. At this time, we're going to move into praise and worship. If I can ask Sister Risha to go ahead and come on up here and that she would sing us a song. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm thankful tonight to be in the house of the Lord, to have another opportunity to give God praise, to worship Him in song. Uh, this song um, is called Praise is What I Do. I feel like it's my personal testimony. Um, God has brought me through a lot of things. He has been with me through every high and every low. And what I've learned over the years is no matter what you're going through, you just praise your way through because God is going to be with you. He is faithful. He is just. He is God and God alone. And I give him all the praise that he is deserving of. He has been so good to me and to my family. And I just want to give God praise even tonight. Today I got a phone call. My husband has been in the nursing home um, this year and last year without any personal visitations. When COVID hit, we were no longer um, able to visit him personally since March the 11th. But God goes where we can't go. And there have been a lot of COVID cases even in the nursing home. This January, this month was the highest number of positive cases. There was one week, there was 34 positive cases in one week. Another week was 25 cases, new cases. And I just begin to plead the blood, just like every, like Brother Drew said tonight, what is your need? I would plead the blood. Father, this week I want you to dispatch angels on divine assignment, covering him with your blood. There were nurses that were taking care of him personally that got COVID, but Brother Chris has not had COVID yet and I give God praise I praise him in advance because he is a miracle working God whatever it is you need praise your way through I want to encourage you tonight to praise him and sing with me and this is an oldie but a goodie but just worship with me tonight hallelujah Jesus praise is what I do when I want to be close to you, I lift my hands in praise. Praise is who I am. I will praise him while I can. I'll bless him at all. Happy or sad, and I 
going through I've learned to worship you You see, know my circumstance Doesn't even stand a chance But my praise outweighs the bad And I vow to pray the name of the Lord. Go ahead and give him some worship. Hallelujah. The name of the Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Praise him. Praise Him through the storm. Praise Him through the sickness. Praise Him through the financial need. Praise Him through the crisis at home. Praise Him. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Man, there's a wonderful spirit of praise in this place tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And there's a great group of people here tonight at Bible study. God bless you. Amen. Just pat yourself on the back. I'm a, I did good by coming to church. Amen. If you, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. While you're turning in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 23, let me just uh, make a couple of additional updates uh, at this time. Uh, as you may be aware, uh, Sister Igdalia's father, George Ortiz Sr., passed away uh, a week ago, uh, if, or just a few days ago, and their funeral arrangements will be on Friday night. There's a viewing at the uh, Jones Funeral Home between 6 and 8, and uh, there's a memorial service on Saturday uh, January 30th at 1230, there is a uh, committal uh, after that service, and then they have an announcement for uh, those that want to uh, have some, uh, there's a reception that's being offered uh, for those who attend. Uh, it says it's, a, it's moments of remembrance, and that's going to be at the uh, courthouse, uh, courtyard by Marriott. And uh, that's just following uh, the committal. Uh, also, there's another, uh, this is for the men, for young men, old men. Uh, we have received an invitation from uh, the church, uh, Pentecostals of Greenville, uh, have invited us. This is on February the 5th, which is Friday night. And um, they have invited us for a men's evening. And uh, they've asked for me to uh, minister the word, but there's going to be a fellowship and there's going to be a recre some recreation. They have a gymnasium. There's going to be ping pong and uh, other things that will be, and there'll be food. And uh, I think it would be good if we took a van or two from our church and so, uh, and uh, I'd like us, uh, the men from our church, to plan to go. Uh, this is one thing that uh, has uh, our churches have been feeling is that isolation. Uh, we are a part of the United Pentecostal Church, and uh, that means that in our this section alone, we have about six or seven churches that we are uh, uh, connected to. As a section, as a district, there are many, many churches. Uh, but section one, we, we have, uh, uh, because of uh, COVID and all of that, not been able to have the fellowship that we've uh, used to have in the past. This is an opportunity for us to go. Men, uh, if you uh, would like to join us, uh, I'll need to talk to you about that. You can come and see me. Uh, we're going to drive at least one van up. If we have to take two, that'll be great as well. And uh, let me just find out when that begins, so we'll know what time we've got to leave on Friday. Starts at 7, yes, uh, and it goes till 9 o'clock, and so we'll, it's about an hour drive, an hour and 20 minutes or so from here, so we'll need to leave in an appropriate time to get there. Amen. Matthew chapter 23, and we have some extra worksheets left over from last week, as well as the scripture uh, list. Uh, there's two uh, uh, documents that you that we still have a few copies of. 
If you didn't have one from last week or you left it at home or you left it on your chair last week and it got thrown away, a lot of things can happen between Wednesdays, right? So if you, ha- if you need that, we have that, and we can also make some more if, if we need that as well. Bible says in Matthew 23, verse 25, Woe unto, the- unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Amen. So Jesus had some strong words for people who were just cleaning up on the outside to show uh, holiness, uh, but he, uh, he just had some really strong words for them. Uh, who would like to be called a hypocrite to their face? Uh, and uh, an extortioner, uh, you know, uh, and called them blind. Uh, he said, you take so much time cleaning up the outside that you neglect the inside. It's full of, of uh, terrible things on the inside. And so tonight I want to continue on with a uh, Bible-based Christian living, and uh, I want us to pray right now that the Lord would help us to have revelation come to us, um, and uh, that you would receive the word uh, with gladness tonight. Lord Jesus, we love you today, and we thank you for your goodness. Thank you for allowing us to come together. Thank you, Lord, for your word. I thank you for the First Pentecostal family. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for each one that has come to this Bible class today. Lord, cover us with your blood. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Praise God. Last week, we spent some time talking about uh, holiness, how that uh, to obtain holiness, you have to receive the Holy Ghost. Uh, You don't get holy on your own. You have to Be given holiness, uh, that is from the Lord, but once you receive it, you have to work to keep it, right? You have to work at it. He that doeth this and reacheth for this and runneth after it, there are many uh, adverbs to uh, talking about uh, how we have to uh, make sure that holiness uh, is a part of our lives. I believe holiness is a part of the Christian's life. I believe that. I believe that uh, it should uh, uh, be a natural pursuit of us. Uh, We're not trying to be as close and as much like the world as we can and still have a a ticket to go to heaven. We are trying to get away from the world. We are trying to uh, separate ourselves from the world. Uh, scripture says that we are in the world, but not of the world, and so uh, we have to do something. We got to do something. Once we get the Holy Ghost, we got to go after it, right? We got to. We got everything. Everything is is up, uploaded. Uh, all the the software. The you got the Holy Ghost app, uh, and it has everything that you need. But you got to go after it. You got to learn how to use that app. You got to learn. All the benefits of that app. You got to go after that. Amen. Whatever the Holy Ghost has for me, I want it. I don't want it just a little bit. I don't want it just every now and then. I want it all the time. I want the Holy Ghost in my life. I want when people look at me, they don't see me, but they see the Holy Ghost. Amen. Don't you want when people see you that they see Jesus? Amen. Praise the Lord. And so... You have to go after it. And then thirdly, we talked about how you you got to work to keep it. Because I don't believe that once you get saved, you're always saved. I don't believe the Bible teaches that. I believe you got to keep working. Amen. Work out your own salvation daily, right? We have to do it daily. And uh, so we got to work to keep it. Jesus is talking to the Pharisees and and uh, the scribes, and 
those who uh, were uh, judgmental of, of uh, everybody else and they had this uh, look and this air about them. We are holy and none of you are holy. And, and uh, Jesus, he got right to the heart. He said, you got to think about what's inside, amen. Instead of just cleaning up the outside, you got to think about what's on the inside. I believe today that uh, Jesus uh, was not condemning their outward holiness. He wasn't condemning it. He was condemning their lack of inward holiness. And I believe that it takes both to live for God. Some people have erroneously believed that since Jesus, he talked about the heart. Man, man, God looks on the heart. Man looks on the outside. They say we all, we, God only looks on the inside. That is not the, the case. That's not the case. They, we think that God is only interested on the in, what's in our heart. But I believe that God's word tells us that whatever's in the heart is going to show on the outside. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, first of all, Jesus specifically admonishes them to cleanse first that which is within the cup and the platter, and that the outside would also be clean. True holiness, church, begins inwardly and progresses outwardly. You can't have something holy on the inside and it not show on the outside. It's going to be evident on the outside. Jesus is clearly teaching that both the inside and the outside need to be cleaned up and to need to be pure. Amen. One without the other is not sufficient. The Bible teaches us that holiness involves both the spirit and the flesh. And so we have to work on both. In 2 Corinthians 1, 7 and verse 1, it says, Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. In 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23, it says, I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Holiness involves the entire package. Holiness involves your inside and your outside, your upside and your downside. Amen. It's not just about an inward purity, and it's not just about an outward purity. Amen. Holiness requires purity in both areas of your life. Amen. Internal holiness. First, it starts on the inside. And I, we mentioned last week that we are powerless to become holy on our own. We are powerless to clean the inside up by ourselves. The inward cleansing of a human soul and spirit can only be accomplished by the power of Jesus Christ. Hebrews 9 and 22 tells us that sins cannot be remitted without the blood. Without the blood of Jesus. And no other cleansing agent can initially purify the heart of man except the blood of Jesus. Praise God. You know, you, there are some people that are expecting better behavior out of some people. I like better behavior, but I have no expectation of better behavior of somebody that does not have the blood of Jesus upon them. Unless they've been baptized in Jesus' name and been filled with the Holy Ghost, there's no expectation that they're not going to act in a worldly manner. Right? Because they have to have the blood of Jesus to cleanse them, to wash them, to take away that sin. Revelations 1 and 5, Jesus Christ 
who washed us from our sins in his own blood. 1 John 1 and 7, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. We have to have the blood. We cannot be relying upon our good deeds or our pious living or even righteous actions. Uh, uh, They cannot cleanse the inward part. We must be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Praise God. That's why He shed His blood. We must never think that our righteous living is something that earns the holiness of God. Inner cleansing and the righteousness of God is imputed to us as a gift from God. Amen. Anything holy in me is not because of me, but because of Him. Because He gave it to me. He gave me the ability. Amen. When we are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, we have the blood of Jesus applied to our hearts, and we are purified and cleansed from all sin. Praise the Lord. But after we have had the blood applied to our lives, we have a responsibility to keep the heart and the inner man clean. If you put garbage in, you're going to get garbage out. Praise God. Proverbs 4 and 23 says to keep or to guard thy heart with all diligence. And after we have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus, we need to learn how to wash ourselves in the Word of God. In the Word of God. There's a cleansing power in the Word of God. Amen. We, if we get in the Word, amen, we know that there's a continual washing, a continual purification, a continual cleansing that takes place in our lives by the Word of God. Amen. If you are one that is neglecting to read your Bible and uh, just a casual attendee of service, then you ain't taking a spiritual bath in a while. You get in the Word, and the Word has a way of cleansing us, uh, amen, and purifying us. Hallelujah. It has that ability to wash us. Praise God. John 15 and 3. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. 1 Peter 1 and 22. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth which is the word through the spirit. Ephesians 5 verse 25 and 26 says that Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Praise God. Amen. You know, you know why we have a midweek service? Amen. It's so that halfway through the week we can come to church, hear the word, amen, and allow. A, we're going through a car wash. Amen. We're going through a cleansing. We're going through, amen, a, a, a purification by the word if you'll allow it in you. Amen. If you're too busy, amen, for the word, amen, then you will not be purified by it. Praise God. When you read the Bible, amen, that's why bread is so important. The bread program that we're doing, reading through the Word, reading through the Word, amen, it's a, it's a cleansing that takes place. Uh, I believe that when you, amen, you, if you, listen, the Word is, is, we call it bread because it's, it nourishes us, right? When you read the Word, you fill up. And when, if you, if you will fill up, Early in the morning with the Word, you'll find that the rest of the day you don't have cravings for other things. You're not going to be enticed to try to eat from this vine or eat from this table. or You know what I'm talking about? You're filling yourself up. uh, And at the same time, you're cleansing yourself. There needs to be internal holiness. You need to have God working inside of you. 
Psalms 119, 11, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Internal holiness is vital. But there is authentic, amen, uh, there's a necessity for us to have external holiness also. Romans chapter 12 and verse number 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Amen. Amen. I was thinking about those that think, oh, God's only looking at the heart. This scripture says that you present your bodies. You can't look at my heart. You don't know what my heart's like. <laughs> you can't see the in par inward part of a man, right? You have to uh, have something to present to people. Right? You have to have something to show people. We present our bodies. Living sacrifices. Holy, acceptable unto God. Outward holiness is not unreasonable and it's not extreme. It is our reasonable. It is logical. It is responsible external holiness begins with offering our bodies as living sacrifices unto God by definition to sacrifice is to offer up or to give something that is dear and costly to you Amen. it's going to cost you to live for God it's going to you know it's going to require a sacrifice of you our bodies, living sacrifices. You know the problem with the living sacrifices rather than a dead sacrifice? A dead sacrifice ain't going nowhere. But a living sacrifice can get up off that altar. That's why Paul said, I die daily. Because he knew his flesh had the desire, amen, to get up off that altar every once in a while. But if I'm dead, I'm not going anywhere. Praise God. A sacrifice. When we offer our bodies as living sacrifices, then we are saying, Lord, uh, we're offering our activities. It might inconvenience me. There might be some get-togethers that I can't go to. There might be some parties that I can't visit. There might be some places I can't go. There might be some things I cannot do. There might be some recreation that is not wholesome for me. And so we say, God, I commit my body. I sacrifice my body because I want to be pleasing to you. We might have to be inconvenienced sometimes living for God. You're going to have people tell you, oh, you go to that church, you can't do this, and you can't do that. No, you can do all that. You can. You can. But I choose to be a Christian. I choose to present myself to God and say, my body is not my own. I belong to Jesus Christ. I offer myself, I offer my lifestyle to God as a sacrifice. As a Christian, we cannot allow our bodies to be involved in sinful deeds and sinful activities. Have you ever not been sure about a sinful activity? And then you went there and guess what? You took the Holy Ghost with you. Started feeling uncomfortable. There's something on the inside wasn't comfortable doing what you were doing or being where you were being. And now, if you listen to that, you got up and left. But you keep doing that and you keep doing it for a long time. And 
eventually you're gonna, not going to feel that ickiness. It's going to go away. But it's about self-denial. Romans chapter 6 and verse 12, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that ye should obey it in its lust thereof. The Christian life is always about self-denial. We don't like that too much. In order to follow Christ, there must first be things that we learn to say no to. Things that are all about our flesh. Things that the devil wants us to do. We got to say no to that too. We got to say no to things that are worldly. There's always going to be somebody somewhere that's going to try to entice you. They, they, they're, not, they're not wicked. I'm not saying that they're wicked. I'm just saying that they, that if you don't watch what you do, you might go and do stuff. But the, the devil will always present somebody, you know, hey, we're, we're, we're having a party, or we're doing this, or we're going here, we're doing that. Always going to be a pull from the, from the world to get you. Matthew 16 and 24, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny or abstain or disown himself and take up his cross and follow me. Titus 2, 12 says, Denying ungodliness and worldly lust. We have to deny the appetites and the desires of our flesh. That's called carnality. Carnal people do not deny their flesh. Carnal people allow their flesh and the lusts that are in their flesh to run rampant. But spiritual people say, I don't live for myself. I don't belong to myself. I live by another, amen, mandate, another set of guidelines, amen, that makes me a child of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Romans 3, 8 and verse 13. And if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify or kill the deeds of the body, ye shall live. This was an, a warning that was written to the church, to Christians in Rome. A reminder that we must Make a choice in our lifestyle. We must mortify. We, you, you gotta, it's, it's an intentional thing. you got to work at it. Mortify your own flesh. Praise God. The Apostle Paul teaches us the necessity of dying, denying the flesh, controlling our carnal appetites, bringing the body into control. Of the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 9 and 27, but I keep my under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. You know, there's nobody in this place that don't have appetites in your flesh. From the pulpit to the back. We all have appetites of our flesh that we want to go after, that we think about, that we long for. But you have to say no to those things. You have to say no to those things. Praise God. I keep under my body. I bring it into subjection. We've got to keep it under our body. Bible says is a temple of God, the Holy Ghost. God is dwelling in you. 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 19, what? Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have, not of yourself, but of God. Ye are not your own. See, our bodies don't really belong to us. Our body doesn't belong to us. Our body belongs to the Lord. He purchased it. He paid for it. 
We, you know, people today do a lot of things to their bodies because they think it's theirs. They think that's their canvas. You know, they're, they mark it, they stab it, they pierce it, they do all kinds of terrible things to their body. But that's the, that's the trick of the enemy because the enemy wants you to think that you belong to yourself when actually you've been bought by, with a price. Jesus purchased you. We have become guardians of the temple of God. It's our responsibility to keep it pure, to keep it holy. We're going to fail a lot. We're going to stumble a lot. There's probably two or three times in a week you're going to have to get back up again. It happens to all of us a lot because we still live in this broken body. And the Bible says that our flesh is an enemy of God. Your flesh doesn't want to go to heaven. As much as you say, I want to go to heaven. Your flesh would rather satisfy itself in this life and take, it, take that body to hell than for you to sacrifice in this life a little bit so you can re- inherit an eternal reward in heaven. Amen. You believe that tonight? And you know, God will not continue to dwell in a temple that is allowed to be defiled and corrupted all the time. Holy Ghost will leave if you don't take care. What is the purpose of holiness? What is the purpose of a holy life? The purpose of it is that God gets the glory. I want God to get the glory from my life. 1 Corinthians 6 and 20, For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Uh, Everything that we do needs to bring glory to Jesus Christ. You have a divine purpose in life. You're not just living here so that one day you die. No, you have a a purpose, a mandate in your life, and that is to bring glory and honor to Jesus Christ. Praise God. Our righteous lifestyles, our testimonies, not so that we can say that we are righteous and that we are holy and that we are pure. No, our righteousness is a testimony of the indwelling presence of the Holy Ghost in us. Matthew 5 and 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Glorify your Father. We are perfecting. We're perfecting. You know, uh, doctors are practicing, right? And we're, we're also practicing. We're perfecting. We're, we're, we want to get better at this, not worse at this. See, God is a holy God, and His people are a holy people. Praise God. Now, the last half of my message and lesson here tonight is in regards to our conversation, our speech. Christians, by the Holy Ghost, are instructed to control their tongue and their speech. You can't just say whatever you want to say when you want to say it. Our behavior is influenced by our conversation. 1 Corinthians 5 and 33 be not deceived. Evil, evil communication corrupt good manners. How many had a mama that reminded you of that a lot? Proverbs 21 and 23, Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from troubles. 
1 Timothy 5 and 13. And with all, they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but tattlers also and busybodies, speaking things which they ought not. Speaking things which they ought not. Praise God. James chapter 3 and verse 2. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Philippians 2 and verse 14. Do all things without murmuring and disputing. 1 Peter chapter 4 and 15. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. He lumps all those three together in the same scripture. Imagine a murderer, a thief, and a busybody, and an evildoer are all in the same verse. According to 1 Corinthians 15 and 33, wicked or ungodly conversation corrupts our behavior. And I want to just go through a list here tonight from the Scriptures. There are types of speech, verbal behavior, that Christians who are holy should not engage in and should avoid. The Bible talks about tail-bearing and gossip. Tail-bearing and gossip. Psalms 101, verse 5, Whoso privily slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off. Leviticus 19 and 16, Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 18, He that uttereth a slander is a fool. 1 Timothy 5 and 13, idle, wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but tattlers also and busybodies speaking things that they ought not. We just have to watch what we say. We've got to watch our speech. It is true today as it was back when we were kids. You cannot take back your words even if you hit the delete. Once those words are out there, they are out there, you cannot bring it back and you might take that post off and it might not show up on the screen, but it has been out there, it is out there, you have said it. Calculate your words. Be careful about what you say. Tailbearing and gossip. The Bible said, I'm going to cut them off. You know, uh, I was talking with Brother Hernandez the other night. California, you know, is always known for their forest fires. Right? You hear about it every year. Millions and millions of acres burned to the ground every year. And We were talking about how that they, because they don't want to wreck the forest, they don't cut down a divide. I don't know what what the actual word is, but you cut down, amen, enough so that the fire, amen, doesn't have any more fuel to burn. And so you, you cut off the supply. The same is true in a conversation. If you want the conversation to end, You just got to stop conversing. It stops the fuel from being available. You don't like what somebody said about you? Don't respond. That's where it's going to stop. It's going to end right there. They may carry on, but they are the ones that look bad. Stop there. Bible talks about murmuring and complaining. How many knows a murmurer? How many knows a complainer? Nothing's right. Nothing's ever right for them. Complaining and murmuring. 
Philippians 2 and 14, do all things without murmuring and disputing. 1 Corinthians 10 and 10, neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Murmur means to grumble and complain. To murmur means to be griping all the time, whining all the time, moaning and fretting and fussing, muttering and whispering underneath your breath all the time. The Bible says that God sent fiery serpents among the children of Israel in, in the wilderness because they murmured and they complained. Numbers chapter 21, read it for yourself. God is not happy with people who murmur and complain. God is not happy with people who gossip. God is not happy with people who spread discord and strife and conflict. Did you hear what so-and-so said? Did you see what they did? Somebody that's always trying to sow discord. Proverbs 6 and verse 19 a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. The Bible says the Lord hateth. Romans 16 and 17. I beseech, now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division. Mark them. The Bible also talks about swearing oaths. Swearing an oath. James 5 and 12. Above all things, my brethren, swear not. Neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath. But let your yea be yea and your nay be nay, lest ye fall into condemnation. And just because the person talking to you may curse or swear does not give you the license to swear back. Don't swear. You know what the swear words are. There are even Pentecostal swear words. Yeah, you know some of them, right? <laughs> Amen. Swearing an oath, making a, it means to make a pledge, make a vow, make a covenant. Don't swear something and then don't, and then not follow through with it because your word becomes nothing. And you are a child of God. You need to, your yea needs to be yea and your nay needs to be nay. Your yes needs to be yes. Your no needs to be no. It needs to always be that way. You need to even tell the truth even to your own hurt. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 8. But now ye also put off filthy communication out of your mouth. The Bible talks against filthy communication. Amen. Around, around my mom, there's no potty talk. Ask my boys. I don't know whether she's washed her mouth out with soap or not, but she's done me before. There's potty talk. Filthy communication. It's, I, I really feel that people use swear words and curse words because they're not educated enough to have an alternative. You are showing your colors. If you can only rattle off four-letter word, four words and curse words, you're only showing your ignorance when you do that. Because the Holy Ghost didn't make you say that. You're showing not only your education level, but you're also showing your heart condition. Because the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. 
filthy communication. There are many words, there are phrases that are frequently used by the world that should not be spoken from the lips of a born-again Christian. Cursing and reviling is also unscriptural. James chapter 3, verse 8, But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. Men, uh, my brethren, these things ought not to be so to be. How can you come into church and worship God and love on God and just be oozing all this love, love, I love God, I love, love, love you God, and you go out and you curse at men and you say all manner of evil against them even in a word, amen, you, those words are descriptive words that you are saying about a person and you're talking about a person who is, born, is shaped in the, in the image of God. Bible says that the words can kill. Words can kill. Romans 12 and verse 14, bless them which persecute you. Bless and not curse. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 9, know ye not that the righteousness, the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither revilers nor in, uh, shall inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. You know, sweet, just as sweet water and bitter water don't come out of the same tap, so blessing and cursing don't come out of the same tap either. Amen. There's that scripture in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26. It gives you, gives you the right to be angry but doesn't give you the right to sin. Angry? Okay. Just don't sin. The word comes to your mind, just don't say it. If you don't use it, eventually, your, your mind will take that out of the thesaurus and the, it'll take those words right out of your vocabulary. But if you use them a lot, then they'll be at the tip of your tongue. The words that are at the front of the file are going to come out first. So if you'll bless people rather than curse them, if you'll bless people like you bless God, then those things will be the first things out of your mouth. Am I perfect about that? No. I have my issues. I have my struggles. I have Times when, uh, you know, I wish I could take a word back or take a, a glance back uh, or just wish I could undo it. Can't, can't. Bible talks about a lying tongue, one that bears false witness. Exodus 20 and 16, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy Neighbor. Mark chapter 10 and verse 19. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not bear false witness. Colossians 3 and verse 9. Lie not one to another. I've always found that if you tell the truth, you don't have to keep track as, as much. But when you tell lies, then you got to keep track. Because eventually it's going to catch up with you. It's going to catch up. Revelation 21 and 8. All liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. Wow. Lying and untruthful witness is an offense to God. Talking about the speech, holy speech. Their speech that should not come out of an individual that has the Holy Ghost abiding in them. Amen. Scripture also talks about idle words. 
just talking to be talking. Just taking up space. Amen. Nevin likes to go to sports clips, get his hair cut. He thinks when I take him there that he's going to get the, the tea tree special. Where they do that. Oh, he's like got this hot thing. I mean, that, I got to give blood to be able to do that every time, you know. I mean, that, but I don't like going there because they got those guys talking on the TV. Sports people talking. They ain't talking about nothing. They're just talking. Play the sport. Don't talk about it. Show me the sport. Don't talk about it. Idle words, it says. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm sure that's because I'm not interested in what the, the, you know. But I'm telling you, there are people that are just like that. They don't have any real reason to be talking. They just are talking. Idle words. Idle words can be defined as pointless or unnecessary, frivolous words, senseless, uncontrolled words. You know, surely there are a lot of times when those people that say idle things have to pause and say, did I, did I just really say that? Did, I, did, I, did that come out of my mouth? Matthew chapter 12 and verse 36. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. I don't know what the ratio is. They say that women say a lot more words in a day than a man says. But I know a lot of men that say a lot of words. It's not about the amount, it's the kind of words. You know what I'm saying? You're, hey, women, women were created just like God created them. <laughs> you know, they just got to work at what those words are. So do men. Saying nothing, men, can be allowed as saying a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Oh, we're all, us married guys, we're all going to need to go to this marriage encounter here. <laughs> February 13th. You got to follow that up on the 14th with a date to a, for a steakhouse or someplace amazing. James 1 and 19, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear and slow to speak. Our words should be weighed carefully before we speak, for in them is life or death. It's in the power of the tongue, Proverbs 18. A lot of people get caught up in vulgarity, you know. They got a potty mouth. You know, they got, they can't, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just surrender. It's just, it's just. <laughs> Vulgar talking, unclean humor. Now, there ain't nothing wrong with telling a joke. There ain't nothing wrong with being funny. But if you're vulgar, then you need to stop. You, need, there, there are, you can buy books that have clean jokes in them. If you can't come up with one on your own, go read a book that has clean jokes in them. Ephesians 5, 3, let not... Uh, let it not be once named among you as become of saints, neither filthiness, which is obscenity, nor foolish talking, 
which is folly, nor jesting, which is uh, vulgarity, which, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. So we gotta, we got to clean it up. You know, let God do the, clean, the cleaning inside. Man, you know that uh, mom, mom, uh, many times she jammed that bar of soap through my teeth. And it didn't just last for a little bit, even after she was done, that you, you couldn't get all that. that. That soap had to dissolve in between your teeth. So that stayed with you for a long time. They probably got good taste in soap now, but my when I was growing up, they did not. She would. I said, I one time. I hadn't seen my mom in uh, quite a while. I was in boarding school. And she came up, and I was mad at my dorm parent. And and she, my mom was standing there, and the dorm parent was, and I was I was angry at my dorm parent, and I swore. And my, I hadn't seen my mom in like nine, nine weeks or so because I was in boarding school. And I'd only, she'd only been up. I just welcomed her in. We were going to talk about me going out to have a meal with my, with my. And my mom, she, she slapped me right. I was in high school. I was, a, I was probably 10th or 11th grade. And she just hauled, hauled off and slapped me. Yeah. <laughs> and we, you know. We got to guard our tongue. We don't want ugliness coming out of us. We are ambassadors of Jesus Christ, and and I and I truly am. I'm going to close on with this one, and uh, this is very important, uh, and and it's about taking the name of the Lord in vain. This is so common today. Exodus twenty and seven. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Praise the Lord. Now, to use the name of the Lord in profanity or as a catchword or an abbreviation of the name of the Lord or something similar to the name of the Lord. The Lord is not going to hold you guiltless. We cannot take the name of the Lord in vain. We cannot say the name of Jesus casually. We cannot. We need to love that name. We need, when, when we say that name, it ought to be in worship. It ought to be in praise. It ought to be, you know, I, I, hey, I was, I was out to eat the other day with, with, we had just left church here. We were at a, at a certain place and, and these, the waitresses over here were having a little get together and they were not even, they were not clocked in, but they, they were cursing and I had my friend, you know, my family and all that, they were, and uh, I, I wasn't having none of it. And I went over, I said, that has to stop. I said, if you're off the clock, then go home. But you're not talking that way around my friends and my family. But people take the name of the Lord around you if you allow them to. It may happen a few times. They'll, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. But if you remind them, I don't, you don't take the name of the Lord around in vain around me. We have euphemisms. We have words that we, we, a lot. People say it a lot. Oh, my God. OMG. Jeez. Uh, gosh. These things, they are, they just are in place of saying the name of Jesus. That's, that's what that is. 
So as Christians, I admonish you to let the Holy Ghost be seen in your words, in your conversation. Psalms 19 and verse number 14 says, Let the words of my mouth be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. Psalms 39 and verse 1. I will take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle. Colossians 4 and verse 6 says, Let your speech be always with grace. With grace. Let your speech be always with grace. Amen. So there is uh, the Holy Ghost inside of us. If we'll stay in the Word, if we'll stay in the presence of God, the closer you get to Jesus, the more you'll start looking like Him and sounding like Him and acting like Him. The Bible says in Him, in him who was no guile. There was nothing, nobody could ever point a finger at Jesus and say He was inappropriate. He didn't, when he rebuked, it was, it was necessary. When he, but he didn't let his words be idle. They, every word is calculated. Every word, we're going to have to give an account for every word. And uh, I want to just encourage you, uh, you have the Holy Ghost, and you still uh, have trouble with your conversation that you work on that. I hope that the next time if a swear word slips out or a bad story comes to your mind, you're about ready to tell it, that you'll check your, something in your spirit will check. Hey, hey, pastor just taught about that. Pastor just admonishes. What? You know, am I trying to control your tongue? No. I'm not trying to control your tongue. I want you to control your tongue. Because the Bible says if you can control your tongue, then the whole body can be controlled. All right? And so if we will purpose to allow the Holy Ghost to speak through us. I'm not saying that, you know, it's all some super spiritual, oh, everything I say is a word of God. No, I'm not saying that. I'm talking about saying kind words, words of healing, words of blessing. Bless them that curse you, the Bible says. Bless them. And, and if you get into a spit match with somebody, the only way that it will care, keep going on is if you keep spitting. Someone just stop. Amen. Don't let it be said. Amen. We, the Bible says don't let your good be evil spoken of. You know, I, I want them to say people at First Pentecostal, they're... They're not just kind when you come and visit them at church, but you see them on the street, and they're, they're saying hi, and they're, yes, sir, and no, sir, and yes, ma'am, all that good stuff. And uh, the Holy Ghost will help you. The Holy Ghost will guide you in all these things. Amen. And uh, let, me just, let me just say that... Uh, uh, Our kids learn how to talk from mom and dad's talking. They also learn how to talk from the people, the friends that they hang around. They also learn how to talk by what they watch. They also learn how, you, you know, you know, there's one thing that you never have to teach a child. You never have to teach a child how to lie. That comes natural. And the same is true if they hear bad words in their ears all the time. There's only, it's going to come out somewhere, sometime. I hope it comes out when it's, it's going to embarrass, embarrass you, mom and dad. I, I hope it comes out. Then you'll keep a check on it. Praise the Lord. Would you stand with me tonight? Hallelujah. For years and years of history of the children of Israel 
And they had the law of God. They couldn't keep the law. They couldn't. And the Bible says if they broke the law, one law, they broke them all. They couldn't do it. But God said, I, I, want, I want it to be different in the church. I want it to be different in my body, in my bride. He said, I'm going to help them. And so you don't have to do all this on your own. God wants to help you. He said, be thou holy as I, the Lord thy God, am holy. Amen. You can be holy. You do have the Holy Ghost in you, and you can live a life, amen, according to the Word of God. Praise God. Would you just, amen, lift your hands right now, and let's talk to Jesus just a minute before we leave here tonight. Oh, Jesus, sometimes my words hurt rather than edify, tear down rather than build up. Help my words, O oh God. The words of my mouth, O oh God, are a reflection of what's in my heart, Lord Jesus. I pray, Lord, that you would help me, O oh God. Have words of kindness. Help me to speak the truth, O oh God, even to my own hurt, O oh God. Help me, Lord Jesus, to allow the Holy Ghost to work through me. Lord Jesus, I want people to be able to identify me as a child of God through my words, through my conversation. Lord Jesus, I pray that as we leave this Bible study tonight, your hand would be upon us. Lord, don't let the word be quickly forgotten. Let it be uh, brought to our mind through, the, through our day-to-day -day living, Lord Jesus. Lord, if there's bad words, if there's bad speech, if there's bad conduct, help us to change it. Help us to change it in the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, I ask you to go with us and cover us with your blood. Be with those who are not able to be here tonight, those who are watching tonight, bless their hearts, I pray. Bless those and heal those who are sick tonight. And Lord, wrap your arms around those who are mourning today and those who are sorrowful today. And Lord Jesus, I pray in your name. Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name.